Eye on South Asia is brought to you by Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo together will go far. Welcome back to Eye on South Asia. Sanjeev, we're going to talk about Abe George. Abe do you know? George. Do you know about Abe George? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know about Abe George. All tell right, so I'm going to tell you, he is a leading Amer Indian American jurist, and he is all set to clash with the current Brooklyn District Attorney. Hmm. And he is currently served as the Assistant District Attorney in Manhattan's uh, District Attorney Office, so he's running for this new position. Um, sure. And he feels that, you know, in Brooklyn, this incumbent person, um, his name Charles is Hines. Charles Hines. And a 24-year incumbent. Yes, 24-year incumbent. So, so he feels like it's a time for a change. Right. Abe George, a first-gen American, right? Lifelong Brooklyn native, a real Brooklyn son. His parents actually migrated from India. And Abe George, you know, product of New York school. Uh, worked uh, for uh, district attorney's office. Such a young age, he's going to be contesting um, against Charles Hines, a 24-year incumbent for Brooklyn district attorney position. Yes. That is going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. yep. And his background is um, having worked in special narcotics, uh, a citywide agency that's tasked with combating narcotics-related crimes. And he's also been tasked to um, investigate homicides and those right. sorts of things. Very tough issues in the Brooklyn community. So he really has a lot of experience when it comes to really dealing with the issues in that local Okay, area. he's also a half-star university graduate with law degree. Mm -hmm. And just like his parents, um, you know, he believes in helping others and he's been doing so. Um, community work and helping out a lot of people. So, uh, and he was also honored to be hired by one of the greatest public servants alive, then Manhattan District Attorney Robert Morgenthau. Yes. So, he's got an impressive work record um, on a piece of paper, and of course, you know, he's knowledgeable and eligible for Brooklyn District Attorney position, but we'll find out whether he's able to beat Mr. Charles Hines. Yes, and this election would be in 2013. Yep. So we'll see what happens with that. The news is already out there. I'm sure <laughs> uh, Mr. Abe George will uh, start campaign soon. All right, we have another interesting story about an Indian American surgeon, and he's going to be bringing low-cost heart therapy to India. So it's like a poor man's bypass surgery. Yes, exactly. And this Indian American. Uh, surgeon Dr. Mukesh Hariyawala is known as also artificial heart surgeon. Mm -hmm. And and yet, rightfully you said this is an interesting story because this, um, you know, he's set to introduce a unique low cost triple heart surgery in India to help patients with diabetes who cannot afford expensive bypass operations. That's why I say it's a poor man's bypass surgery. Yes, and this doctor has been trained in Harvard, so he will soon be receiving the India's Most Admired Surgeon Award in 2012. And it's interesting what actual technology he's been using for this triple heart therapy. Well, he rece he's receiving an award for pioneering work on angiogenesis, or growth of new blood vessels, to aid healing at the Pharmaceutical Leadership Summit, organized by Healthcare Magazine, Pharma leaders in Mumbai on September 21st. Exactly. So hopefully, you know, we can see a lot more of this being implemented in India um, with heart patients and current FDA technology um, and approvals are still pending for this type of surgery. It's still fairly expensive in the U.S. So the cost is kind of a challenge when it sure. comes to India. Yep. And um, we should also point out a fact that this Dr. Mukesh Haryawala, who holds a special honorary visiting cardiac surgeon appointment at Mumbai's Just Look Hospital. And Just Look Hospital is one of the best, I guess, um, I shouldn't say the oldest, but one of the best of modern times hospital in the Mumbai. And, mm -hmm. you know, he holds a special honorary visiting cardiac surgeon, you know, um, position over there and also plans to bring 
to India next year, the artificial titanium heart or, or ventricular assist device called VAD implant that can play the role of a supplementary heart. So all the best to Dr. Hariawala. And for all the viewers who are actually fans of uh, music and especially musician late R.D. Berman, uh, Dr. Hariawala is the one who had performed heart surgery on R.D. Berman. Oh, wow. Yep. That's, that's amazing. Yep. And hopefully his uh, technology and his new procedure can really help a lot of people. Let's hope so. Uh, you know, the India, I think we talked about last week uh, with diabetes and then mm -hmm. and, and, and in India how many people are affected with diabetes. Yeah. So obviously this um, triple heart therapy should help uh, people in India. Absolutely. Okay, let's move on to Indian Americans mm. asking U.S. lawmakers to cut aid to Pakistan. Right. And this is coming ahead of the ISI chiefs meeting with U.S. congressmen and Indian Americans from uh, an organization called the National Indian American Coalition, NIAC, are coming together and asking the congressmen to pass a legislation which is going to cut the aid to Pakistan. Right. This. Yeah. So, you know, they've been citing issues such as, you know, Pakistan is facilitating terrorist groups and they seem to be moving freely in Afghanistan, so you know they're questioning the reasoning for all this aid and where the money will actually be going. Right, and it's not only Indian Americans, but I think with Indian Americans, there are about 10 U.S. lawmakers also joining with them. Um, they're like Joe Walsh, Ted Poe, um, Pete Olson, and Stephen Yates. You know, they attended all these. Um, um, uh, this meeting, Coffee with Congress, event organized by NIAC at the Capitol Hill. Mm -hmm. The bright side of this, the whole thing is the Indian lobby is showing its strength and the gathering its support in raising their voice um, an opinion that why an aid to Pakistan must be cut, must be reduced, or must be stopped. Because um, aid given to Pakistan, and the U.S. also knows about it, that most of it's being used for terrorist uh, organizations, and it's going to terrorist organizations until government of Pakistan really comes up with the proof that such is not a case. Right. So the NIAC has been collecting petitions. So far they have over 50,000 petitions to the U.S. Congress, and you know this is in support of Ted Poe's bill to cut Right, the Congressman Ted Poe's bill, right. And uh, this issue has been in the news for some time. Like I say, U.S. lawmakers and several senators mm -hmm. are also addressing this issue in the Senate. So, um, exactly. You know, we'll see. Okay. So, our next story has to do with wooing NRIs back to India. Mm -hmm. The IAS and IFS coaching schools want NRIs particularly those with lots of money, um, to enroll in coaching and training courses that have to do with civil services for IAS and IFS. And typically we have seen NRIs going back to India for professional type of training, such as medical and MBA, engineering, stuff like that. But this is kind of a new niche that they're targeting. and. It's interesting because there is some demand with this. Some NRIs want to give back to their motherland and be able to join civil services. It's like, what better field to do this in? Indian Administrative Services, known as IAS, and then the other one is Indian Police Service, known as IPS, right? Mm -hmm. these, um, these services and, um, and uh, you know, when the head of these services are considered, uh, you know, one of the most uh, learned, intelligent, very admirable individuals for that because the exams that you have to go through, they're very, very difficult to go through. Now this, um, I think Mr. Mishra, Mr. A.K. Mishra, chief of the academy, mm -hmm. right, who runs this academy in India, uh, it's called Delhi, New Delhi based Chanakya IAS Academy. He's been going out to NRIs, especially he was in Dubai, and uh, recruiting NRI students into this. 
it's okay, it sounds pretty good, and I think so far there has been a very encouraging response, but this is just the beginning. Once you become IAS or an IPS officer, Bhavna, it's not easy to be in India and to follow rules and regulations and the laws in a country where there is a high corruption, there is a lot of bureaucracy, mm -hmm. and there is no, almost no law and order situation. This officer's jobs almost becomes very difficult to, to govern. So unless and until the system is changed in India, or these NRIs um, uh, who actually want to be IAS and IPS officers, they know the system in India is quite bad. Unless they are willing to take the risk, then it's okay. Exactly. Otherwise, this workshops and this kind of academies, I don't think that's for NRIs. Yeah, I mean, they come from a very different world, you know, the, the way law enforcement here in this country is right. conducted and, you know, going into India and actually implementing that training is such a different world. There's so much culture shock that even True. happens yeah. in fields like medical engineering and MBA. So, um, it, it, so quite, how this is practically going to work is a question. It's quite complicated. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a good, it's a good intention. It's a good effort. It's a good yeah. effort. Good intention, good effort. But if they can really get NRIs dedicated yes. for those positions in India, we'll see. We'll see. All right, so that's all the time we have for this segment. And we're going to take another short break, and we'll be right back on Ion South Asia. Ion South Asia is brought to you by Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo together will go far.